So guys, if we end up in this position here, and we're gonna have a look at a few, few ways we can end up in the future into this position here. Almost like I wanna harness him, but I don't like to harness him like this because Jamil can turn on me. He's got too much power to turn back to me here with his body. So when I'm here, make sure he's on his side here. I put my hand to the hip, and my other hand to the back of his head. Behind him, I'm on my knees and my toes. So I'm like a gorilla here, and I use my chest to weigh down at him with my head over his head. Making sure my principles are in play, keep tight. Another way to end up here, one from takedown we'll see in the future, and two, here's a, another way to look at it. Maybe Jamil's turned on me here, and he's got his shoulder off, which he should be looking to go back to guard or wherever he wants to go back to. I keep here and it'd be detrimental for me to try and push his shoulder down. He can do a lot of things with me. So I keep my base, I keep my chest over his shoulder. I move around, I make sure I keep the weight down on his shoulder here so I can remain back to the position I want to be. So now I'm back to where we started from is here. That's one way amongst many others that we can end up here. Once I end up here, if the camera just comes down to a level here, perfect. To this position, I weight Jamil here and I'm looking to use my chest to lean on him so I can reach through and thread my thumb in. It could be his gi or it could be self-defense, could be his t-shirt. So I put my thumb in here. I keep my hand on the floor, keep base until I'm ready to go. The next step is I fish my arm underneath and like a karate chop, come behind his head and lasso his neck. Go right here, lean down, make sure I get my thumb into the closest collar to me or the t-shirt, whatever's underneath. Here, I fish my arm underneath, make a solid structure and karate chop as I pull. The only problem here, sometimes I go to this position, I go to put my arm behind Jamil's head and he gives me a most muscular and he pushes and he pulls his shoulder in, locks me down. So now I can't get my hand behind his head, which is what I needed to finish him off. So the same setup I get to here, can't get my hand behind. I say if he wants to go that way, I help him out. I put my hand on his shoulder, he can trap it as best he wants. The goal is make sure my bicep and my arm stays behind Jamil's head, don't let it up. As I move around, my body's free to move to get to the north-south position, but my bicep stays very much behind his head. I pull him to his back and finish him off. So we're here, control, same position, set up, make sure my thumb is in. I try to put my hand behind, he won't have it. Okay, he can lock in. Hold his shoulder. Make sure my shoulder and biceps pushed into the back of his head. Move freely and now elbows clinch in as I dip down. And one last little tip. When I put my hand in, when I get my hand in here, as soon as my hand comes in, I try not to leave it like this because there's a little gap there. It's still tight, but Jamil's better breathing. So with my hand here, I do this. And now I continue to do every other technique that I added into it, and it's already going to be tighter. So we'll go slow. Here, whether I was putting my hand behind or moving behind, my wrist yeah. turns. Yeah, that fits. Straight on his artery already. Here, boom, I'll go very slow. I didn't make it to the back. <laughs> but you can see the difference. Yeah. From this position, we're going to see it from a self-preservation point of view as a good control and ultimately a good finish in the future videos.